Sega console stories, a necessity for gracious living. Few hardware manufacturers out there have a platform development history quite as convoluted as that of good old service games. The 80s and 90s would serve as a breeding ground for the company and their third-party affiliates to release a variety of weird and wonderful Sega systems. While some of these are obscure variants of more well-known pieces of hardware, some would remain mere prototypes, never even having the honour of official releases. In today's case, however, we are going to be taking a trip back in time to discuss one of Sega's most mysterious concepts of all, the fabled Project Jupiter, the so-called unreleased precursor to that of the now legendary Saturn. So the question is, was there any reality to such a game console existing, or are the stories you hear about this thing completely fake news? I am Lady Decade and this is the story of Sega's Project Jupiter. The early 90s was an exciting time to be a gamer. The console war between Nintendo and Sega was in full swing, and other companies were constantly throwing their hat into the ring to try and grab a slice of that console market pie, resulting in the release of the 3DO, Atari Jaguar, FM Towns Marty, and Amiga CD32, just to name a few. With so much powerful next-generation hardware coming to the market, it was only a matter of time until Sega would consider upgrading what they had available to consumers too. As power-wise at least, the Mega Drive was becoming very dated very quickly. In April of 1994, British publication Edge magazine would publish a new issue with text on the cover stating, Saturn World First. Hard info director from Sega of Japan on both versions of the new 32-bit powerhouse. Now I know what you're thinking. Both pieces of Sega's 32-bit hardware? Well, they must be talking about the Saturn and the 32X, right? Well, no, this could not have been the case, as the Sega 32X was not developed in Japan, but instead created by Sega of America to extend the life of the Genesis. Edge was clearly talking about something entirely different. Things become clearer when turning to page 6 of the magazine, where an article headline reads, Saturn and Jupiter, Sega's brave new worlds. The article would display some early screenshots of Virtua Fighter, Virtua Soccer and Panzer Dragoon from the Consumer Electronics Show, with the mag proudly boasting that they have managed to uncover Sega's secret plans for 32-bit video gaming, with the next level being out of this world. So, considering the Jupiter was never actually sold, they must have meant out of this world quite literally, so no lies told I guess. Jokes aside, in this article, Edge would report, We can now reveal that not one, but two consoles will be released by Sega in November of this year. The Saturn project was expected to be a CD-ROM based system with the possibility of a cartridge port. Not only have Sega decided to include the port, but a second cartridge only machine code named Jupiter will also appear. They would go on to add, at the time of writing, Project Jupiter has still not been officially announced. Complete compatibility between the two systems will be possible with the release of a low-cost add-on for Jupiter which will provide the same double-speed CD-ROM drive, MPEG chips and extra RAM. So there you go. If the Sega Jupiter wasn't mysterious enough for you, how about the Sega Jupiter CD. Where does this madness even end? Adding to Edge's report on Project Jupiter, they would comment that a cartridge system allows them to bring out a more affordable 30,000 yen machine, which they would clarify was only 185 pounds, as opposed to the CD-based Saturn, which they worked out would be the equivalent of about 310 pounds in Japan. Perhaps most intriguing of all, the publication would also post specs for both systems, with them describing the Jupiter as virtually the same as the Saturn, but with around half of the internal RAM and no CD drive. But was all of this just fake news? Well, there is certainly information within the article that could suggest that the writers may have had either 
completely at the wrong end of the stick or just a bad source. For example, it sort of alludes to the fact that the cartridge slot for the Sega Saturn would be used for cartridge-based games, and that would be compatible with both a Saturn and a Jupiter hardware, whereas in reality the slots would be used to expand RAM capacity and game data. So retrospectively, it certainly reads like none of this was potentially true at all. So, while Project Jupiter may indeed sound like absolute poppycock, in November of 2020 everything would change, as we would finally be provided with firm, sufficient evidence that Sega did indeed work on a scrapped hardware concept that preceded that of the Saturn. An incredible 26 years after this article in Edge magazine surfaced, Sega would upload a video to their official YouTube channel that would explain the truth behind Project Jupiter, in a series of videos produced to celebrate Sega's 60th anniversary as a company. One bit of content was produced that features Professor Miyazaki presenting a lecture on the history of Sega consumer hardware. The video would not just highlight the truth about the Sega Jupiter, but would also explain how Sega's hardware being codenamed after different celestial objects in our solar system worked. This naming convention for various projects actually began with the Sega Saturn, with the platform being named after the sixth planet in our solar system. This name was chosen due to Sega looking at the console as their sixth generation of home console hardware, with the first three generations being attributed to the SG-1000 Marks 1, 2 and 3, and the fourth being attributed to the international revision of the Mark III, which we all know and love as the Sega Master System, which, confusingly, was also released in Japan. In fact, the Sega Mega Drive's codename would even be Project Mark V, thus making the Saturn codenamed after the sixth planet make even more sense. The Game Gear would retrospectively be referred to as Project Mercury, with the Sega Nomad and 32X becoming Project Venus and Project Mars. Which, of course, brings us next to Project Jupiter. The professor would clarify to us that Project Jupiter was indeed for a console that was not only never brought to the market, but it was a project whereby development would end up being cut so early that there was never any sort of prototype produced for this almost forgotten system either. He would reveal that the bit about it being a new cartridge-based console was indeed true, and had it ever seen release, it would obviously have twisted time so much that platforms like the Dreamcast would likely have never seen release. The reason why Sega had a cartridge-based system in development to proceed with the Mega Drive was that when the project was first underway, CDs were fairly new to the market, and the drives to read them were very expensive. Sega felt that working on a new console that could read game cartridges would be much more cost effective for consumers and would help Sega keep its console prices low. As for the scrappage of this fabled hardware, he would outline that it was simply due to the case of CD-ROM demand growing dramatically and by utilising CD, games could be produced that stored large amounts of data, making CD-based hardware a better option for all. With the era of CD-ROM arriving in a flash, Project Jupiter would be canned just as quickly. As an additional interesting side note to all of this, Sega would still go on to produce cartridge-based hardware that would share ports with the Sega Saturn console, which would come in the form of the Sega Titan Video, arcade hardware that utilised ROM cartridges instead of CD-ROMs, with the Titan Video platform seemingly being named after Saturn's largest moon. A very fitting name indeed for this project. If you enjoyed this video, then perhaps I could could consider doing a deep dive on the Sega Titan video in the future, but for now, at least I hope that I was able to clarify to you many of the misconceptions that surround the almost mythical Project Jupiter. It may have taken 26 years to get the true answers that we needed, but thankfully, it appears that this story has finally been put to bed. So I am Lady Decade, and that was the story 
of the Sega Jupiter. Well, if you enjoyed this content, then like, subscribe, comment below, and also share my videos with all of your friends and family. And as always, I like to say a massive thank you to everyone who supports me over on Patreon. So without further ado, big shout outs go out to Joseph Fleming, Boyd Chan, MJS256, Joe Bory, William J. Scott III, Arthur Hackett, Revenant, Gabe Canada, House of the Ted, the Viscount of Vavavoom, Sebastian Velez, the LEEC, Legum Effort Electronics Channel, Zelinkdorf, Third Dwarf, Taxation is Theft, Tony Tran, Travis Ortis, Joseph K, Revan Kane, Christian Geese, Okyo Kyonji 2010, Spartan Fist 117, Nao, Matt Full, Lawrence Manning, Pi, Damian Wells, Frank 1982, Big Papa Pickles, Drone, Moose and Rabbit, Tommy Maltezos, Johnny Holly, Tebow Baggins, Sir Landry Does Gaming, Christopher DiVieo, Richard Turnbull, Green Cooper, John Laurie, Matthew Langtree, Brandon Kays, Eric Rounds, Daniel, Man Shovel, Alex Hughes, Glendon Bill, NS Thriller, Travis Flanker, Julian Carl Dubois Lafay, Blood Blue 85, Swagboy, UK Kraut Gaming, Proswell, Anthony Ryan Bennett, Brent O'Hara, Timothy Hansma, Ryan Dacker, Dizzy Kuala, Sandbox Larry, Wesley Tomatsu, Triforce of Shadows, Robert Hornerbrook, OPC, EmuMovies.com, Ben Haradine, Gaspar Heller, Sagemeister, and Ago, as well as all of the rest of my lovely patrons. Thank you all so much.